Okay. Perfect. Uh, Thank you, Marty. Nice to see everyone. And this is actually perfect timing because we definitely do do science projects. So that is one of the focus areas that we do. Um, I'm going to kind of tailor my kind of chat today to, uh, to focus more on how it relates to the previous presentation about PRIs and then what we do, you know, Tom highlighted perfectly earlier about uh, the behavioral aspects of a lot of what we do. And that's kind of how we're stand up comes in that mix. And then also how we can uh, work with family offices and uh, early uh, and different types of companies. So um, Sean Kowalski, SVP of development. So I oversee all of the development efforts at stand up to cancer. Marty, uh, perfect to introduce us. We are part of the industry born out of LA. Um, and our mission is to raise awareness and funds. Uh, we to detect, intercept and treat cancers with focus on all patients. Um, you may recognize a few of these faces here. Um, this really speaks to the behavioral aspect of um, and the awareness part of our mission is we leverage our connections through the entertainment, through industry um, based out of LA to raise awareness for important messaging like early detection, um, early screenings, things like lung cancer screenings. Um, so you'll see, a, you'll probably recognize us as a very uh, celebrity focus. We really use our celebrity connections and our media connections to drive these early detection messaging around cancer. So every year we uh, are able to secure around a little over 300 million to these types of efforts, which is quite substantial considering these uh, these early companies, right? That's not going to be part of their budget. So, you know, things like uh, uh, early detection uh, tests, they're not going to have the budget to say this is why it's important. Um, the previous panel highlighted the uh, the shocking uh, small percentage of individuals that are recommended to get screening at certain ages for types of cancers and how that actually what that actually looks like from those who follow forward and do that. Um, that's where we come in. So we say, you know, there are trusted voices out there that we can leverage to say to push these important messaging. And that kind of really ties into our scientific portfolio. Well, it's not just an awareness organization. That's just one of our two main pillars. So our real uh, strength at Stanford Cancer is our global scientific community. So we have four Nobel laureates. All these are individuals who volunteer to look at projects and look at our science projects. Um, we, we view ourselves as a collaborative organization. So collaborative all the way from our corporate partners with American Airlines, MLB, MasterCard, all the way to us, how we approach uh, team science. Uh, we really do view ourselves as one of the uh, founders of team science, bringing together multiple institutions to focus on one, uh, one very important uh, project. So we have a very, uh, very deep network through all sorts of industry, academic, and it's different institutes. Our portfolio, as you see, um, is quite diverse. Um, we This is our historic portfolio. So we are heavily, heavily in pancreatic right now, as previously mentioned, lung, breast, but a lot of the rare cancers too that don't uh, receive the, the type of funding that is needed. Um, collaboration. So we work with all, so we work with nonprofits. We work all the way to farm and industry partners. So there's a number of ways that we work with these different organizations, but uh, we do have a wide range of, of, of advocacy partners all the way to industry partners. A couple quick breakthroughs on, on the science side. This is really relevant to this group is um, was a pan pancreatic uh, cancer vaccine that um, out of MSK that we funded. And then more recently, a rectal cancer trial that um, that shows 100% clinical response in the first 12 patients. This is our why. You know, this is what when we say success, this is what we want to see in our teams. Um, we're incredibly excited about this. Um, this is the team that led that uh, initiative. And uh, as you see, 100% response rate. This is our why. Kelly was able to have her second child because of this trial. There was no way with current treatments that she was going to be able to have that. And she just delivered her uh, her second baby, her second child, which is a baby girl. This is our why from an impact standpoint with the type of science projects we do. Um, future looking forward is curing cancer, uh, reduce mortality from our, from cancer. That's absolutely where we're going. You see this was done with breast and prostate. We believe that early detection and interception is how we are going to do that. And we're going to look at all tumor types. So that's the thing about Sam to cancer that's a little bit different is we are not disease specific. So we look at all types of cancers. We do not have a preference for cancers. Um, anything we do uh, do focus on more of the rare cancers that traditionally receive or do not receive the amount of funding. 
um, that are available for some of the more common cancers, but we look at uh, across the across across the spectrum. Sean, you allocate to allocators. You don't directly allocate. You allocate to other foundations. So we, it's a number of, so yeah, so we basically will collaborate. So if we have small groups that want to do a larger project, we'll be like the honest broker of that. So we might bring in a, an industry partner. We might bring in three or four different foundations. We will then run the project, put out a call for ideas. So the lead investor might be at MSK. If that might be at Stanford, Stanford, they might be tied to the Mayo Clinic, St. Jude. It, but we are the ones who run the project and bring these groups together and then pull in the right experts um, to make sure that the, we're not a type of organization that funds and circles back in a few years. We have rigorous uh, review process. We're looking, talking to our teams constantly, and we bring them mandatory in person every year. That is a that is a big um, part of our model that we really value because we're getting experts from across all different industries looking at these projects for a two or three day period and suggesting different aims. Maybe you should be looking at this. Maybe you should be looking at that. So, so, so you guys do like a concierge philanthropy where somebody will give you some sort of a donation dedicated to XYZ cancer. And then you will, will you work with that donor and figure out the milestones you want to achieve to get to where they want to be? Absolutely. And that's a, and that was, I'll skip to that. Cause that's a perfect slide. You know, AI is a, skip, just... no, no, that, that's, it's a perfect uh, way of making impact. So there's ways we work with emerging companies, which is through our catalyst program, but, to Marty's, uh, to Marty's point, um, research projects. So we have a lot of families that will come to us and they say, you know, my, my family unfortunately has a history of breast cancer, a prostate cancer, a pancreatic cancer. We want to do something. And this is where we work with a lot of family offices is they will come to us and say, we want to do something in research, but we don't want to just give to one institution. We want to give, we want to bring together the best and brightest. And we want to feel like we're sitting at the table with the researchers. We are part of that process. They come to us and we will structure that project based on those, that family's aims, what they're looking to accomplish. And then we will, they will be part of that three, you know, often there are two, three year projects. They feel like they have, they have a seat at the table. So they might be serving as the patient advocate voice, but that is what's really unique about our model is that we are to Marty's point, personalized custom research projects based on, uh, donors and families' interests. So that is a little bit different than you see in a lot of cancer research organizations where labs and investigators have their priorities. Um, for us, we are we can be very responsive to donors' uh, interests and what they're looking to accomplish. Um, the, I wanted to just quickly touch on um, the Catalyst project. So this I thought this was really relevant for uh, especially for emerging companies. Norm uh, Freeland mentioned about PRI. So we know that the struggles these companies have that stage. Um, when once they once these emerging companies do receive that funding from a PRI, they can then partner with us with Stand Up to Cancer and we will give them better peer review. We will fold them into our network of collaborators and really stretch those dollars. So that's where we see Stand Up to Cancer coming in the mix is from possible awareness efforts and messaging that, that we can turn on to folding them into our, our network of, um, of industry partners, of collaborators and other foundations. So um, that's, I just wanted to connect a few dots from the PRI structure from a, you know, a possible DAF or large foundation to these companies. And that's where we can come in to help kind of amplify and give additional support to those groups. Um, this, I can talk in more detail about this, but this would be our program structure for a Catalyst project. So we would define the program. We, you see the back and forth between our scientific uh, executive committees. Uh, we have the grant selection and then we provide that project oversight for these groups. So we're seeing a lot of these companies come to us looking for a way to interact. Um, that's why I think this is a great group to have together because those PRIs to them allow them to start to interact with some um, organizations like ourselves who can help amplify and ultimately, you know, our goal is to help them develop whatever technology treatment that they're looking at to save more lives. So that's where we think we can really, we really come in and help support that, um, those, those emerging companies. So I'll stop is there. So is this a workflow? Yeah, this is a work. This is just a, a workflow from the donor's point of view. So this will be upon the funding. We will then define the program definition with that company. So if it's a device company, if it's uh, you know a new therapy, if it's uh, whatever it is, we will then 
outline then the program definition of what they look to accomplish. And then we will go through the process of the grant selection, putting the, bringing the right experts in for that project and then running it through de depending on what the project scope is for the number of years. How big is the budget roughly that you guys have? So our, our budget or for this? How much you give out in grants? So any, at any given year, as Marty said, it really depends on the year, but anyway, from in the high 40s to high 80 million, depending on the year. But you've given as much as a billion and a half at this point. Correct. Historically, over, we've ever granted or leveraged about a 1.5 billion. Yep. Um, I was a little confused. Are you a not-for-profit? We are. Yep. So that's why I say what I always wanted to start go back to like our why is saving lives. That's what our main goal is. But we have have these mechanisms and abilities to interact and start and help leverage companies that are making a real difference that maybe uh, can never see a successful product or device because the lack of traditional funding. Right. So that's why we like to put our model out there to say upon the organizations or companies being stable, this is how we can help leverage it because the technologies are promising. You've heard a lot of them over um, the last, you know, meetings about how promising the outcomes are for patients, but they're struggling in that, that financial aspect. That's where we can come in to help. Do you to only help. do grants or your equity over debt invest or like? It's grants right now. We are looking at that. That is something we're looking at. There, there might be an aspect of venture philanthropy involved in the near future. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, because I mean, really, when we started, we were only 15 years old. So really, it was started of we, uh, our founders, Katie Kirk was one of our founders, Sherry Lansing. They said, look, let's come together and do something really great in cancer. Let's leverage our networks. Let's do something good one night. They got all the big networks that they are either on the boards of or controlled said, we're all going to do one hour. We're going to raise a ton of money. One hour, we're going to call all of our celebrity friends. And then we're just going to give the money away to researchers. And then what we heard back from the community was this team science approach is breaking barriers. We're seeing outcomes. There's something more here. So really it started as a one night kind of venture just to raise, to leverage connections, to raise a lot of money and then fund innovative projects to us actually standing up our own organization and knowing that this, this model does work. So we're only 15 years um, we've been around, which is quite young for a nonprofit that has, at this level of impact. Uh, so for example, American Cancer Society, they have a fund. Correct. They're a little bit, yeah, absolutely. So we are looking at that impact fund. That is something we're exploring. And hopefully as we get to know you all over the next, you know, coming years, we'll have that more developed. And those could be also different conversations. How are you currently partnering with Pharma? So they will come to us with a specific project, whether it's a, a drug in their pipeline that they're looking to test, and they will fund the project. They will then, of course, be hands off from it, and we will run it through our review process. Um, how much is to universities versus faces like drug faces at FDA that you're funding? Uh, it's uh, it's majority university. Okay, so you give a certain biology department or microbiologist or whatever. Correct, and they might serve as lead investigator, and then we'll say we need you to bring in two or three other institutions, and then they'll they'll. They'll run the project. So it's not product based, it's more research based. Correct. So are you international? <laughs> yes. Yep. We have a team in the Netherlands right now that and we're looking at a team in, in Spain as well. You should really talk to uh, King Charles and Princess Charlotte and get those people involved. Yeah, that is that has been that's a great suggestion. It is something that we are looking um we are scaling up our organization, but that is something we are looking at to be. We so CRU Cancer Research UK actually they have a license on our brand in the UK. So that you see this, uh, I don't know if you watch like British Bake Offs or any of those shows. So you'll see the stand up to cancer. So we actually they actually license that from us. That's their fundraising, more edgy, comedic arm of the Research UK uh, Foundation. So we work with them closely. Is it, that could get you a lot of PR. Absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. And that's, I think, a, a strength of stand-up is that we're able to leverage these celebrity uh, entertainment connections to, and we try to use it for more of a awareness, early detection messaging to get that out there. Yep. Sure. Oh, just two quick comments. Yep. Um, one, I was with Katie Couric in the Hamptons where she's raised $800 million for cancer. I don't know if you've connected with her group. And then two, there's a little fund out of Utah that actually is licensing small, this little technology out of 
universities. So Oxford just sent them 500 new companies and so they're already screening stuff. Oh, really? Small okay. Small commercialization and then directly to a very early exit in like two years. Oh, so, interesting. I'd love to chat with you. And Katie is actually one of our founders. Yep. So she's uh so she is one of the one of the founders that came together. This is yep, absolutely. Hey, no, 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 you'll, you'll both be at dinner. Perfect. So look so forward to continuing the conversation. Shana? Yes. Question. Um how do you avoid duplication of efforts? Because mm -hmm. you know, the NCI has huge numbers of SBIR grants given to small companies. Sure. And unless it's a rare disease, we see so much deal flow as venture capitalists. Um, somebody's doing something that probably affects some of these patients and their families. How do you avoid duplication of efforts? Maybe you can pull funds together rather. And wow. we always try to be that broker of those. I'll let our I'll I'll let our science team. I can follow up with a with the do, do you have connections with the NCI? Absolutely, yeah. They're actually at our um at our annual review okay. every year. So they all we yeah. make sure that they are there and present, and that helps with oh, the process. The agency, yeah, right? and then we try to we try to kind of empower some of these smaller foundations that are doing a really great job in their area. Um, you know, they might be this disease specific experts, but they don't have the funding to do a large scale project that they that they intend to do, make a large impact. So we will bundle a few of those groups together, bring them in, and then we will do a, a, a very public facing campaign from a from an awareness standpoint and then help them run the project. So we'll run the project for them. So we kind of try to bring these groups together so they can make a larger impact collectively than they could individually. Uh, another question. More questions. Are you, are you also uh, helping broker collaborative studies or primarily like hands off IITs? Um, I think it's a little bit of a combination, but we can, I'll give you some examples of those, uh, that, what that process looks like as a follow up. Um, so, how do we work best with you guys? You know, we form many executive committees with many not for profits to their benefit and our benefit, right? And so do you guys have any plans for September you're thinking about doing, you know, during United Nations week or things like that, or you know, how, how can we work together with you? Yeah, no, that's a great, thank you, Marty. Um, you know, I think for this, we really want to, any opportunity, you know, our, one of our main projects that we're looking to launch is a, is a, you know, where we find success, I guess. And from the beginning is, is raising funds to answer a, a quite and put a call for ideas out there. So unrestricted, not disease specific. So is where we get the best applications, where we get the best ideas and where we've historically seen the best outcomes. Those that breakthrough uh, slide that I highlighted earlier, many of these came from the, the idea of we're going to put a call for ideas out there in the multi-million dollar range. And then we're going to see what the best op, best ideas come back. Um, we'd like to do a new one using AI technologies and like LLMs and some, so th that would be the biggest help is basically funding either from a family office or groups to, to start a project, not have any restrictions on it and just see what the cancer community is, what the best ideas are right now. So that would be the best. Um, in September, we will be back. We are participating in the Forbes Philanthropy Summit. So more information will be shared um, around some activities we have in New York during that time. So we'd love some participation. And if you are willing to attend the event, that would be great. But basically, we're looking to launch a large AI project um, in the, this year. So that's our I think we've got more than a dozen people from our group say they're very interested in working with you guys, mm -hmm. trying to figure out ways to work with you, whether it's in pinpointing research or helping spread the word. You know, et cetera. And so we're just trying to solidify how to make that happen. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the the funding and helping um secure funding for it to put a call for ideas out there is the is I think the best and brightest idea for us right now with the most the highest need. Um, but awareness efforts are always welcome. So I'm happy to answer any questions offline about about what that could look like, whether it's funds from a family office, from the philanthropic arm, or if it's from an emerging company where uh a part of the budget could be allocated to a new, new research project that we could actually help run for you. So, and I will be at dinner. So any other questions, I'm happy to chat with you, but thank you for this opportunity. Fantastic. Great. Thanks so much, Sean.